expressive iteration is banned in Pioneer. And what does that mean for four color Jeskai Ascendancy? I had a couple of people reach out to me about what they should do with their decks. I didn't have answers at the time, but I really put some thought into it and I came up with the list that I am presenting with you today. How do you replace Jeskai Ascendancy? There's a meme floating around Twitter of the movie Moneyball. And if you're unfamiliar with that movie, Brad Pitt, who plays Billy Bean, is giving a speech about how you can't replace Jason Giambi, an all-star perennial player on the Oakland Athletics, with one other player because one slot doesn't equal one slot. That also applies to deck building strategy here. You can't just replace Expressive Iteration. And in the movie, Brad Pitt's character explains that you have to replace Jason Giambi in the aggregate with multiple slots. That's what we're doing here today. So when you look at this deck list, you might think, Bryant, this list sucks. It has four treasure crews and three copies of Dig Through Time. It's unplayable. Sure, but hear me out. So you're looking for a card that digs for Jeskai Ascendancy, and you're looking for a card that creates card advantage mid combo. So Dig Through Time does both of those things. But it has some constraints when you're playing seven delve threats. So you have treasure crews and dig through time. We have consider to fill the graveyard. We have ascendancy to fill the graveyard. But we've added in strategic planning. This is technically our uh, expressive iteration slot. This digs for ascendancy the same way that iteration would. You don't have to wait till turn three to play it because you can play it on curve because you're not trying to hit land drops now. And it puts three cards to graveyard. It puts two off of the planning itself plus the planning. So that's three cards for Dig Through Time or Treasure Cruise. So when you pair that with Consider and Ascendancy, I think seven Delve Threats is actually quite fine. And if you look at my previous video, I was actually running Escape to the Wilds, which was a five mana card to create card advantage. So I don't think Dig Through Time is that unreasonable. I'm still playing four copies of Strangle. There's people on MTG Goldfish that are only playing one and they prefer more copies of Portable Hole or Chain to the Rocks. I think they're crazy. I think Strangle's where you want to be. Post-ban, I'm expecting a lot of Azorius control decks and I need to make sure that Narset doesn't lock me out. So I am all about the Strangle life. I have updated the mana base just a little bit. I've actually cut a land. In my previous few videos recording this deck, I often board one out and I find myself flooding all the time. So I know it's hearsay. You're like, Brian, you shouldn't be cutting lands. What? Blah, 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 blah. I get it. I really do. But uh, I don't know. My experience playing with this deck is I find myself constantly flooding. So I'm going to try 23 lands today. If it's bad, I can always go up again. And I think that with planning, you're allowed to cast your two drop more aggressively now. So maybe you don't uh, have to wait till turn three to start trying to find those additional lands. Uh, that's what I've got in the sideboard. Like I said, I'm expecting a lot of Azorius control. So Malevolent Hermit, which is great with planning and consider. It's not so great with the Delve Threats, but... You know, these effects make it more interesting, I think. And I'm really trying to beat those control decks. So having this card that makes Ascendancy Uncounterable is pretty desirable to me. Mystical Dispute. Also, you can board this in against Lotus Field. Mystical Dispute can also be coming in against Lotus Field on top of the Alpine Moons. Nar sets for the control matchup and Lotus Field. So I am skimping on Creature Removal. There was three copies of Stern Dismissal in my sideboard previously. I am hoping that with Winota leaving the format, that the format slows down a hair, and I don't need to play those style of cards. If that ends up not being true, you can always adjust your sideboard to taste, cut the Hermits, play the Stern Dismissals, or Chain to the Rocks, whatever you prefer, and uh, that's that. But for now, I'm going to hop on into match number one. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for 
cyborg help? Become a stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. But maybe sweet perk, secret deck list, early access to videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to the first match. We are on the draw. Here I have a double Sylvan Awakening hand, which I don't love. I think if this was one Awakening and some other spell... Honestly, as a six, I would keep this hand without, like, if we just removed one Sylvan Awakening as a six, I would probably keep this. Um, I think it's too slow and that we should mulligan. This hand's looking pretty good. I think we keep this. Bottom the strangle. All right. This could possibly be a turn for a win. And it looks like we're facing the Azorius control deck. Great draw. Play Trion past the turn. And it is in fact Azorius control. Draw. I'm wondering if I should play the Carotid into Sensor. I'm going to say no. I'm just going to play the Trion and pass. They cycle an irrigated farmland. Hallowed fountain. So no Narset. I like to see that. Draw. Let's try the Carotid. Boom. Pass the turn. When it's on four lands now. Obviously they will not tap out. Draw. Another Ascendancy. Let's see if we can find a land here. Planning. We do find the land. This is an interesting spot. I could try to play Jeskai Ascendancy in hopes that they tap out. Like, hope that they play the, uh, the Teferi. But they probably have a two-mana counter if that was the case. I wonder if I'm supposed to just play another Carotid. Okay, let's try this. If I get swept, I'm going to feel like a dummy. But I think that this gives me the best chance. I could also double Jeskai Ascendancy next turn. They cycle Sensor. Okay. Land number five. And there's the Tough. So I can play double Ascendancy here, but we can guarantee one of them resolves. Um, the problem with that is I can't actually cast another spell. Okay. Let's try playing this, I guess. I don't like this is my window. I have to do something. I, I'm just not sure. Wow, that really resolved. Um, let's try another one. So we'll auto yield to that. Oh, no, I, I can't auto yield. That's right. If I if I end up with bolt, that actually hurts me. Yes. 
discard the land. Okay. I'm expecting the Sylvan to be countered. All right, so untap. Sensor, Jovan's Veto. All right, I knew that was a possibility. Um, that's fine though, we have this cruise. So it's auto yield to the draw. Now we make blue, blue, untap, loot, discard opt, discard cruise. Okay, so let's add some more mana here. We'll do red, white, cast treasure cruise. And now it only costs a single blue. And I do think you're supposed to loot, even though you don't have any cards in hand, because if you hit another um, effect, you're going to want the cards in graveyard. Yes. Planning down. Yes. Strangle down. Draw three. Ay, ay, ay. Really? Okay. Cycle. <sighs> so disappointing. <laughs> All right. No dig through times. Not for me. Fast the turn. Four mana. What's going on here? Marching away an ascendancy, and then they can Teferi tuck the other. That's disappointing. We missed our window by drawing three lands, and that's after I cut one. Draw. All right, I think I'm good to pick it up here. No need to waste time. We can go to game two. This was really unfortunate. We had a real window to win there, and we just blanked. Okay, so I'm definitely interested in Narset. We want Fry for their copies of Narset. I'm definitely interested in Hermit and the Dispute. I'm somewhat interested in Mentor as well. So that's almost our entire sideboard. We have to find some stuff to take out here. Portable Hole can come out. Uh, I think you can board down on Strangle. I don't think you really need a ton of effects. So that brings us to 69. We can probably shave a couple copies of Awakening. So that brings us to 67. The only reason I think that is that we have three Mentor. Or I'm sorry, two Mentor. Um, so we're at 67, which is still a ton. Hmm. Wonder if you're allowed to board out opt. Probably not. You could also board out cruise and just rely on dig versus narset. I don't know if I like that though. I think like trying to beat narset that way isn't great. Because like you're an ascendancy deck, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Hmm, 67 is a ton of cards. So right now I'm thinking about Opt. I'm thinking about Treasure Cruise. Another thought I had is like, what if you just don't board in the Disputes? Which is something that I've tried before. Right, uh, I'm down to less than a minute. I'm going to go with my gut here. I'm going to board out Opt. And I'm going to try... Three carotid, that's 62. And part of me wants to try no strangle and just do two fry. Could also board out a couple copy of cruise in case they board in uh, rest in peace. Not sure. I think dig's probably a little bit better. 13 seconds. I don't know. I'm just going to submit this. We shaved one cruise. All right. Sorry that took forever. I didn't really board map. This is a very reasonable hang keep. Okay. Garden pass. Turn one fountain. Deafening silence. So we have one Ottawara. We have Ottawara and this Mentor. 
I mean, Metro number two is also a great draw. Let's pass. My inexperience in boarding really showed there. I think I'm going to play out the Keratid to avoid a, uh, a sensor on the, the Mentor. I don't think I can afford to have this thrown away. I play that tapped, okay. So that means they have very few counters that actually hit Mentor here. All right, and I want to leave blue up. Play Mentor. All right, it's on the table. Obviously, the Mentor plan's a little bit worse when we decided out Opt. Part of me doubts that they have sweepers in their deck. I think untapped land would be our best draw here. Are they going to march? This looks like a march. Yep. Okay, we have the mentor. We can just play it again. Okay. Have to pass. They're passing five open mana. I could play the Ascendancy here, but it's so likely to be countered. I wonder if I should just play the Sylvan Awakening. It makes a monk, and then on top of that I get in for an extra six. Alright, let's go to combat. Hiya. Oh, I thought they had uh, Vigilance. That's just bad. I thought that I could uh, leave up Dispute. Why did I think that they had Vigilance? Getting punked by uh, Wandering Emperor here. That looks bad. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the turning point in this game. Maybe I threw this. I mean, let's try to play Ascendancy, I guess. Right, blue, white, and then red. There we go. Um, I think we just play Keratid. Have to pass. They're on four cards. This, uh, oh, they're activating Hall. Interesting. I'm going to block with my Sylvan, and I think this gives me an opening to play Treasure Cruise. Possibly get back in this. They have three cards in hand. Draw. Okay, I'm at 18. We want to leave one blue open. We can remove these two, I guess. Draw three. All right, let's get in. If they want to trade, that's fine. All right. Another deafening silence. So that means that our Ottawa is no longer an out. And we have both um, mentors down. We've used one Sylvan Awakening. So we have one Awakening left to win this game. And it has to deal 14. We'll take 7 down to 11. That's fine. All right. Draw. Another Dispute. I think I'm gonna cycle here. Why am I tapping triumphs? I don't know. See if I can find anything better. I do need lands, but all right, that was good. I think I'll play this. Pass the turn. They're activating Hall again. It's worth noting that if I try to dig here, Dispute counters it, so I don't really want to do that. I'll go to Blocks. Alright, untap, draw. Let's play Dig Through Time for 4 mana. Let's retap. Blue. 
Dig through time. There's the awakening and a whole bunch of lands. Wow. Um. Jeez. Let's take a triome, I guess. So right now I have 10 damage in play. I don't know if I'm going to be able to live through this Hall of the Storm Giants. Yeah. I guess if I find my Ottawara, I could actually bounce it. I go to four. Let's cycle the Triome. Another dispute. Draw. Oh, I just realized we also have Hermits that I could have found to block this thing. And I never found a Hermit. So I can play Sylvan Awakening and those creatures are indestructible, but it's literally my last win condition. So if I play it now, I think I have to win via Hermit Beats. But I'm dead if I don't, so... Let's cast it. And that's going to lock me out, so... We are 0 and 1 to start this uh, league off. I do think that I probably didn't board correctly. I was under duress. Like, I, the, the timer really got me here. And uh, maybe I should have seen Deafening Silence coming. I did mention Rest in Peace, so maybe this was a reason to leave them in. I was so worried about Narset, though. Another thought is, what if you just take out Keratids in this matchup? Like, just don't leave them in. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about this one, but we're 0 and 1. Let's just move on to the second match. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Keep, 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 keep. We've opened up a fantastic hand for match number two. Time to bounce back. I don't know what just happened there, but uh, yeah, we're keeping this. Blood Crypt. Okay. Not Azorius. And here we've opened up this sort of hand that really rewards you for playing a bunch of Delve spells because we're going to fill up our graveyard pretty quickly. All right, two lands for a Croxa. I'm just going to discard a Consider here. And then I'll Consider again. Ooh. I think I'm going to mill this, unfortunately. We just need to find land 3 that casts Jeskai Ascendancy. And all we get are blue-green lands. Alright, let's play the Awakening. I'm sorry, the Sylvan Carotid. Forgive me. I don't really have any excuse, I'm just a little... Alright, Blood Crypt. They're at 18. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. You got it. Draw. Another Keratid, which means we could go Bananas next turn. Alright, so this would come into play tapped. So I think what we do here is we play the Ottawara. We play another Keratid. And then we Strategic Planning. Let's plan. Take the Strangle. Pass the turn. There are Fable of the Mirror Breaker triggers. Blood Chief's Thirst. Okay. Land four. Soren. All right. So this first ability says look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card and put it to your hand. If you do, you lose life equal to its mana value. So it activates its plus one. You're essentially getting a dark confidant. And because of that, our opponent is now at 12. They'll attack. They'll get a treasure. And then we can pretty freely block with our Sylvan Keratid so we don't take any damage. Draw. Dig through time. 
Okay, so white, red, we can play the Ascendancy. And now we can cast one of our two Delve spells. The question is, which one do we want to cast? And I think Dig Through Time is better when you're if you have the choice between the two. And then this will untap our pair of Keratids. Because we only have one uh, Ascendancy, I can auto-yield to these triggers. Yes. Discard the Hinterland. Dig. Take the Planning and another Dig. Any order. Let's cast the Planning. Yes. Uh, discard a, um, I don't know, we can discard portable hole. Planning. Let's take another cruise. So we have six cards in graveyard. I think I'm actually going to cruise this time. I think at this point we just want raw cards. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Cruise. Yes. Discard a strangle. Draw three. I O. So if we build up to we can play a land here. And then we can I'm pretty sure we can. Yeah, we can play a land and we can awakening. We just need to build up mana. So it's float a blue. We'll cast strangle. Kill the shaman. Draw. Discard the second copy of Awakening. We'll do green, red, strangle hit the Soren. Yes. Discard Keratid. So now we can cast the Sylvan. Leave the red floating, because that way I can strangle after. Let's discard the land. Okay. Blue. Blue. Strangle hit Soren. Now they all untap. Discard this portable hole. Goodbye, Soren. So now we tap all these for mana. Let's cruise. One blue. All right. Draw, discard the consider. Yeah. We're going to draw our entire deck. It's going to be sweet. Let's dig through time. We have plenty of mana. All right, yes. Discard the land. Take another Ascendancy and Planning. 17 cards, 22 cards, my bad. So red, white. Tap these. Play another Ascendancy. Sure, we'll loot again. Discard the Keratid. White, red, blue, and another Ascendancy. Why not? Got to build up your Storm Count. Yes. Yes. I realized that I have an Auto Yield on, so I missed an untap there. It doesn't really matter. Um, they have one open mana. Let's just move to combat. I'm done showboating. Get in there. All right, so we have taken the first game, triple ascendancy in play, just how it's supposed to be. We're facing black red. Honestly, I don't even know if you sideboard here. You probably want the mentors as a backup so you don't lose to, uh, what is it called? Necromentia. But other than that, I think that's probably it. Maybe take out the portable holes. 
we don't really care about damping sphere so i don't know what other permanent that they would have that we care about so i'm just going to try this out game two this hand's fantastic we'll keep it haunted ridge all right play this pass the turn Playing the stomping ground, because if we need to strangle on the second turn, I won't have to shock in order to do it. I'm licensed terse, that's fine. Play the harbor, and a sylvan carotid. So the hearse can do some damage at stopping us from getting to our double spells. So really the key to that is don't play cards just because you can. Choose when you play your cards carefully. All right, and they kept their entire hand on the back of a card that we're going to make ineffective. So we're just going to play our land here, play the Carotid. Pass. Stomping me. Passing again. Play a Sanctum. Let's pass the turn. So this might be a turn that we want to consider... Uh, casting the ops on their end step because we can untap and likely just hard cast the treasure crews to help us find the just guy ascendancy. They found their third land, good for them. All right, opt. Ding dong. All right, no need to cast this second one. Draw. All right, play the ascendancy. I think I'm actually just going to pass here. I know that I could cast Opt and like start to chain a little bit, but I think that the hearse will keep us off of this cruise this turn. So let's just pass. They can activate the hearse for one, sure. Land number four. Chandra, you got it. Exiling the top card. It's a duress. We'll take two. And now we get to party. Draw. Oh boy. Oh boy. You dead. D E D. Auto yield. Yes. I would love to draw a card. Thank you. Discard the Ottawara. Okay, let's tap for a bunch of different colors. Red, blue, play the opt. Sure thing. Yep. Now opt. Taking you on the bottom, draw a card. Another treasure cruise. Lovely. Tap for a bunch of mana. Cruise, exile these. All right. Yes. And our opponent's had enough. 1-1. One, one. That's what our deck does. You love to see it. And I will see you in the second match. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite Stormwind condition, a Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, third match, we're on the play. Sure. So 
with having seven broken delve spells in your deck, I think hands like this become a lot more desirable. So we're going to start off on the Ketria Triome because all of our lands come into play tapped, even the Glacial Fortress or the Hinterland Harbor, because they require an island, plains, or forest to be on the table. All right, so what are we facing here? Is this just Mono Green Devotion? It looks a little bit like it. We'll play the Harbor and pass. Our opponent cast Cultivate. You got it. End step, we will cast Consider. Uh, I think we actually keep that. Cast another Consider. Interesting, I just noticed they picked up a Mountain. Uh, let's keep that too. Because we can triple cantrip on this upcoming turn. Wish I would have cast Ops there instead. Wasted uh, not putting cards to the graveyard. So they're up to five mana. Cavalier of Thorns, okay. So they're not mono green devotion. Emrakul? Dragonlord Atarka? They're just a ramp deck. Cast Opt. I can go to the bottom. Opt again. That can go to the bottom. Jeez. Opt again. Bottom. We definitely cast our spells in the wrong order this game. Not intentionally, but it's just how it played out. Okay, so... Let's play a Triome here. And then we could play Ascendancy, but I don't have a whole lot to do with it next turn. Need to draw some good cards. We're two turns away from winning. World Breaker. So they're going to exile our Ascendancy. This is actually what I was afraid of. I was afraid of World Breaker, and they picked up another one. Yeah, we're probably out of this now. They're attacking. We'll go to 15. Draw. Another land. We flooded again. I'd just like to point out, I cut a land and we're still flooding. Um, let's cruise for four. I think I want to leave one in there. In case we had another delve spell. This was really good. Wow. Okay. Uh, play a tap land pass. The problem is, I, I can't live another... I, I'm actually dead to the layer of the hydra i just realized oh i guess our opponent didn't realize yeah i was exactly dead to the layer of the hydra it's not going to matter though this is another world breaker yeah was not fast enough here okay we lost game one All right, game two. I don't know if we even sideboard. You can maybe bring an Alpine Moon over the portable hole. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. And if I win game two, we can reevaluate game three if I want to make that swap. All right, on the play. Pretty good. We'll try this. I wish that one of these was an untapped land, though, because then I could play a turn two carotid. Turn one grazer. And now we have the turn two carotid. Nice. But with Avnissa. Another grazer. They're going fast. Draw. All right, let's play another Keratid and a tap land. We can opt on the end step. We need to find some sort of payoff spell right now because we're not really doing a whole lot. They play a Keratid and they're passing. Cast the opt. We'll bottom that. Cruise is fine. We're a little bit away from being able to cast it, though. Opt. 
So I wonder if I'm supposed to hold that. So next turn, let's say they play a land. Seven or more lands. So if they play a land, they have six. So they can't play Worldbreaker next turn. I think we just play the Ascendancy. All right, and let's tap this for a red. Strangle a Grazer. I just want to be able to fill my graveyard a little bit here. Draw, yes. We can get rid of that carotid. Four cards in yard. I can't cast anything else. Have to pass the turn. Layer the Hydra. Five mana available here. Cavalier of Thorns. Okay. Damping Spheres in their deck. So that's a reason to leave in the... Um, whatever it's called. The Portable Hole. Even though we can beat an onboard Damping Sphere. So four mana. Let's cruise. Okay, yes. Loot. That was good. Let's see if we can draw some spells here, though. The planning. Let's play the land. Play the awakening. Yes, discard a land. Tap, tap. Strategic planning. Yes. Discard land. And planning. Hello, dig through time. Lovely to see you. All right. I always have to stop myself from singing whenever I cast this card because I, I'm always th if like if you could dig through time. Uh, I'm not going to sing for you this time, but uh, it runs through my head almost every time I cast it. Dig and our opponents picked it up. Off to game number three. All right, so I'm a little bit lower on Strangle now, so I think maybe we could take out the Strangles. It doesn't look like they actually have much we can hit, so we could probably swap those for Alpine Moon. And I could even bring in the Narsets uh, just as like a value card. Let's try this out. Uh, I want to keep this. I just think it's super greedy. So... Let's say we draw land two. And I could planning on time. That would give me a turn three cruise, I think. And then I'd have two delve spells stranded after that. I think you're supposed to mulligan. Good hand. Um, I think you bottom the ascendancy. Like, I get that keeping two Ascendancies is really nice in case they blow one up, but it's a little bit of a liability here. I think the Narset's slightly better. Turn one layer of the Hydra. You got it. Grazer. Fast start. I think we just play the Triome. Pass the turn. Nissa. We pick up a shrine and they have two cards after that draw another triome i'm just gonna opt keep uh, so i want to sit on this opt now because it could be the card i use to win the game this is pilgrimage reveals two forests so they're gonna put a forest into play and then one to hand. Yep, so they have one forest in hand that we know about. All right, so one forest, one unknown. Draw. That was not the land we needed. I think I'm going to play the Ascendancy and hope to draw an untapped land because that means I just win the game. All right, so there's the land we knew about. They're passing. Draw. Unfortunately, we needed untapped land. Um, they also chose not to attack me with Layer of the Hydra, which was interesting. Oh, that was weird. There was definitely like a weird 
lag undo there. Uh, so is it better for me to Narset or cast Opt Planning? I think I want to Narset. Okay, let's auto yield. Yes. Portable hold down. Minus. Take the Alpine Moon. Pass. So it's worth noting if they play the forest here or a land here, these start tapping for two. They cultivate. Pick a mountain forest. What's going on? So now they remember to attack with Lair. All right, so they're tapped out. They're dead. Game over. Draw. GG. Summon Awakening. Yes. Discard planning. Opt. Yes. Discard Alpine Moon. Bottom. Tap, 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 tap. I don't know why I tapped for red there. That was honestly just an accident. Consider. Yes. Land down. Yes. Filling up that graveyard for dig. Or I need these other delve threats. I, I, something about Rigrin Triome. I just make it tap for a color man I don't care about. Uh, let's guess dig. Sentency triggers. Discard this land. I think our opponent's conceding. And they do! We are two and one. Picking it up after that first round. Maybe I just needed to get the rust off. Ugh. How about that? All right, two left to go. I will see you there. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right, fourth match on the play. Unfortunately, this one's not a keep, Mulligan. Um, I don't know. Even if we land two, our hand doesn't actually do anything. I think we're, we're supposed to go to five. All right, this is going to have to work. This is the best hand we've seen. We'll bottom the Jeskai Ascendancy and planning. We have to find land two, but if we find land two, the rest of the hand does do meaningful magic. All right, turn one pool and consider. Not land two. Uh-oh, looking a little bit grim. Looks like Azorius control, draw, bummer. From being flooded to uh, not so many lands. Hallowed Fountain. Draw. All right, not looking good. All right, their turn. All right, I've seen enough. We can go to the next one. Okay, that stinks. But we get a chance to redeem ourselves from match number one. Let's see if we can do that. So I do want the Hermits, I want the Disputes, and Fry. Maybe we don't board in our own Narset. So maybe that's a concession we make, is we don't bring these in. Uh, so let's try boarding out the Keratids this time. That is a strategy I mentioned. We probably want the Mentors. So that's 67. I really don't want Portable Hole in my deck. Uh Brought out at least two copies of Strangle. I think you can shave one Sylvan Awakening. Let's do three instead of two this time. And then we'll take out two portable hole, two opt. Actually, let's shave one cruise. Let's do three opt. 
a little bit lower to the ground. Let's try this out. All right, on the play. Good hand, keep. Try on pass. Follow the Storm Giants. Draw. I think I might hold the Garden to cycle. I was thinking about playing it, but with drawing the fifth land, I think I want to have the option of cycling. I would love to see a tap land here. All right, land two. I don't want to play the Mentor into uh, Sensor, so I think I'm probably just going to play land pass here. Which does give me an opportunity to cycle this, so it's not the worst. All right, ouch, 18, pass. And they cycle sensor. Land number three. All right, I'm going to cycle the garden now. Dispute. So I could play Mentor with Dispute back up. Is that good enough? I think it's got to be. So if they have Counterspell plus Dispute, it would get me. Now we absorb, or uh, Mystical Dispute the Absorb. Hiya, Mentor on the table. Get out of here. We have to be able to untap with it, though. That's the big thing here. Because if we untap, I, I'm feeling really confident about this game. Okay, so they've played a Hollowed Fountain. White mana. I don't love this. I think we're getting uh, marched. Four mana. And we've been marched. Okay, draw. Let's consider in that. Consider if I keep this, I can't uh, treasure cruise this turn, so I think I'm actually going to bin the dispute. Uh, didn't really love another dig. Okay. Treasure Cruise, land, pass. They also have land five. And they're passing. Okay. Draw, dig three. Let's opt. I think I'm going to keep this. Just play it as a land. When we have the Awakening, it's not the worst. Plus, with having so many digs, Having land drops to cast dig on the end step isn't terrible. Wandering Emperor. You're gonna put me on a clock. I think I'm going to attempt to dispute here. I'm trying to play a long game at the moment, and this doesn't help with playing that long game. All right, so they've played a hollowed fountain and they're passing. Draw. Interesting. I'm going to pass another end step bell cast a dig. Or in their upkeep. They cycle farmland. And another farmland. Okay. They have five. And another land. To fairy. Let's attempt to dig in response. We have one mystical dispute left in our deck. Blue, blue. Blue. Okay. Let's see if this gets countered. And it will. Okay. We have a chance potentially to win on our turn. Depends on what their hand is, but. We need an untap land. 
draw. That doesn't do it. Um, I think we just try to resolve the ascendancy here. They have two open mana. Okay. So we're going to kill the Teph. Take away their card advantage. All right, they're on two cards now. We have double dig through time. Three cards, so it's three versus three. Draw. Out of War is interesting. I'm going to pass. I don't want to use this. Like, I don't want to play it. Because if they top deck a Narset, it becomes really valuable. Deluge. I'm going to respond with Dig. Um, if I pay four, I'd only have two open mana. So is that better? Because I think I'm supposed to just leave one open. Because the difference between one and two like pretty much doesn't exist. And at least this way I can pay for a sensor. We pick up a dispute. I like that. And another ascendancy is really good. All right, we're going to let the deluge go. So they've uh, resolved their own dig through time, so to speak. So now they're closer on cards. Now they draw, they're even on cards, and they're plus on lands. All right, draw. Another cruise. Let's try the ascendancy again. Blue, white, red. We've been vetoed. I think I'm going to pass here. Four mana, make a 1-1, one, one. you got it. Another land. So they have three cards. We'll take one. Fifteen. Draw. Alright, I'm going to pass, and I think I'm going to dig in response to their deluge. Alright, so they have a white floating because they tapped wrong. So we will attempt to dig. All right. And that worked. Um, I think I'd rather have double planning than the awakening. Put that on the bottom and then any order. And I'm actually going to dispute this. I think them catching up on cards is not what I want. And they don't have sensor. That's good to see. Three mana. Are they making a Hall of the Storm Giants? Tough. Okay. Draw. Okay, they have three cards. So I could burn the Awakening just to kill the Teferi. I don't know if I love that, though. Let's start off with a Consider. That can go to the graveyard. All right, what's planning? The Hermit's interesting. Okay, so... We can play the Hermit. Hey, our spells can't be countered. Go to 12. And let's cruise. I am putting myself in a little bit of danger here because if they have an end step shark typhoon for five, untap, check my creature with the fairy, attack with all the storm giants, I'm dead. But taking a little bit of a risk here. Tapping mana. Not sure what they're doing. Castle Vantress, okay. One on the bottom, one on top. They've plus to fairy, so they're not afraid of the Geist. Or they have a removal spell. Okay. Really? They left Portable Hole in against me? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, you got me, I guess. 
That's so strange. They have four cards. We'll take one down to 11. Draw. Okay. Um, hmm. Play land. White, red, and all of the other lines are blue. So we'll start off with the mentor, see if this resolves. And it does. Love to see that. Planning. I am getting really low on cards in deck. I'm down to 20 cards. I think we take the ascendancy here. I've played a land. Um, let's try another strategic planning. Take another ascendancy. Pass the turn. Four mana, and they'll scry two. They put two on the bottom that time. What's going on here? Four mana, Supreme Verdict. Okay. Yeah. So now they get to untap two. Draw. All right, white, red. You need a blue. Ascendancy. They have five cards in hand. You've absorbed red, white, blue, ascendancy, and another absorb. And it's going to put them up to 20, which means that the Sylvan Awakening, it's really tough for me to win. I have one ascendancy left in my deck. Let's consider, see if I can find it. Keep that. Pass the turn. So it's worth noting that Teferi is going to go up to 8 on their turn. I will have to fry the Teferi just to make sure it does an ultimate. Ooh, here's another thought. I could... I don't know why I didn't think of this until now. I could theoretically auto-wara the portable hole on their end step. But I think it comes back as the front half. Yeah, because right now it shows that it's the front half. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Okay, I will fry the tough. Okay, untap, draw, another triumph. I'm going to play it out just because I need lands in play for the Awakening. And I guess I'll get to see how the portable hole works with returning my hermit to play. They'll scry two. Bunch of mana. The Dream Trawler. All right, so Hexproof. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one, plus so whenever it attacks, you draw a card as lifelink. Yeah, it's a big threat. Okay, so, I mean, it's truth time. Let's attempt to Ottawara this... Portable hole. Can't believe I'm doing this. Damn. I was really hoping it was the backside. Let's opt. Um. Don't think I can keep that. Another hermit. Three, six, nine, eleven lands. That's not enough for lethal. They have two blockers, and one of which gains life. They're attempting to march my hermit. I'll counter that. Okay, draw. Another hermit. Okay, so let's play hermit. And another one. Now we can put this one into play. Pass that turn. I don't know what realistically a winning game looks like for us. 
uh, counter. So if I counter this, they can activate the hall and then draw a card, draw a card, attack for lethal. So I have to let this one go. Actually, I'm dead no matter what. Because uh, now they chuck this and I'm dead. They got it. All right. Um, I mean, that was a really interesting game. Uh, our game one, not so much, but this one was a good game. I mean, I can't believe our opponent had portable hole in their deck, but it got me. That's for sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we want more mentors. Sylvan Awakening is a win con without ascendancy is not that good, but maybe we need to keep that many in. I'm not sure. One round left. Let's focus on that. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Cobalt and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. All right, the fifth and final round, we are on the play. Can I keep six lands? Uh, it's really good if we hit lands. I think I'm going to risk it. Put a planning on the bottom. Okay, turn one, try on past the turn. Would love to draw an untapped green source on turn two. Black, white land. Okay, draw. No land. Cast, consider. Not a land. Rip me. I mean, I do think that this hand was a keep. It just, we didn't hit it on turn two. We'll try again next turn. Second land. Sure. Draw. No land again. Consider. There we go. Okay. Just going to be lazy and cast this now. Keep that. There we go. We're looking like a deck with a plan now. Another Bishop of the Wings. Okay. Ouch. Draw. I'm going to just play the Ascendancy here. If we draw an untapped land, we win the game. Because I can play Summon Awakening into Portable Hole and then just, you know, combo out. They at land three. Okay, so they've played an angel. And because they have seven more than their starting life total, all their creatures get plus two plus two. We'll take six down to 11. And they're one damage short of lethal next turn. Draw. We did not hit. Okay, which is fine. The game plan changes. We're going to play Carotid and then remove this from the game to buy a little bit of time. Portable hole. Okay. Auto yield. I should have done auto yield on that first one. Yes. I think we discard Strangle. So by keeping the second copy of Sylvan Awakening, I can potentially win through discard next turn. All right, pass. It's another four damage short of winning the game on their turn. I think this does it. We are dead for exactly 11. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. So close. If we had just found that land a turn earlier. Wait, I could have blocked this? <gasps> no! I thought that thing flew. Oh no, I just took lethal. Now I'm going to draw the land and it, I guess I didn't have a one drop anyway. Okay. Ah, uh, it stunk. Okay. Um, maybe we cut a couple copies of strangle for fry. Let's try this out. All right. Chance at Redemption. Can I keep that? 
this is fairly good. Keep. I think I'm going to bottom a land, which is a little bit greedy. But I think it's probably correct. We can still turn three Ascendancy with a Carotid, even if I miss my third land. They're paying two. Am I being thought seized? Yep, that hurts. Interesting. They went after strategic planning. That's very curious. They must have some sort of enchantment destruction in their hand if that was the case. Or another discard spell. Okay. Draw. Another dig. We can't cast that. They missed their second land. I just realized that. It's worth noting that if we weren't playing Dig Through Time, that would have been a spot that we could get Gigantha. But I think without Expressive Reiteration in the format, Dig is, just makes it worth it. So they're going to get our Dig Through Time here, and then we'll have another. We're one card away from being able to cast this. This costs eight. We could delve here. We only have four mana. So we're one mana short or a card in Graveyard short. Draw. I don't want to burn this. I'm just going to pass. They found land two. Draw. Have to pass. Something that I can kill with the strangle. Good deal. All right, so we will strangle that. Consider. Mill that. So that's six in graveyard, and I can now cast Dig Through Time. All right, we're going to main phase that in case I end up taking a land. I mean, I don't want to take a land, but in case it happens. Another dig, fry, strangle. I, honestly, I don't love any of these. Um, I think it might be like dig opt. All right, pass the turn. Yep, you have a bishop of the wings. Draw. Opt. Sure. Opt again. Keep that. Portable hole. And consider. I think we actually want the land here. We'll take the land. Pass the turn. I can cast dig next turn now. No, I can't. I will not be casting Dig next turn now. Interesting. They took Sylvan Awakening. The disrespect to Dig through time. Okay. Um, all right. I think I'm actually just going to pay three. I was going to pay more, but I think I want to play the Carotid as well. Because if I find Jeskai Ascendancy off this, I want to be able to... Uh, do some stuff next turn. There's the Ascendancy and Opt. So the question is, do I play out the Carotid or do I play the Ascendancy? They've already played four discard spells. If I play out the Carotid now, we probably don't even need. And I would have to play out the Ottawara. All right, I'm going to risk it i'm gonna play the carotid here i i realized that i could get burned i understand some angel sure thing draw ding dong okay so ascendancy and now we play the sylvan auto yield Auto yield. Yes. Discard Ottawara. Now we cast the opt. All of our lands and tap. Now we can treasure cruise as well. And our opponent's conceded. Off to game three. I think I'm just going to resubmit. I don't really see the need to change anything here. 
Looks like we've opened up a really strong hand for the third game. I'm definitely going to keep this. Very resilient against discard as well. Turn one god, the shrine tapped. No first turn discard spell. How about that? Play the garden pass. We have turn two Sylvan Carotid, turn three Ascendancy, maybe even a turn four win. I feel like that's a little bit of wishful thinking, but I'll say it out loud anyway. Land into hearse. You got it. But I don't even have a graveyard. Pass. And there's the thought C. So goodbye, Jeskai Ascendancy. They've taken the Ascendancy, which can grow the hearse later. And Valkyrie. They have three cards in hand. Draw. Play Carotid. I can play the Opt here looking for another land. But if I do that, they get to eat two cards with the hearse. I don't know how much that actually matters, so I'm just going to try to find third land here. Perfect. Pass. Okay. I wonder if maybe with hearse being in the format, you want to be on more portable holes than strangles. It's tough. Um... I really like that Strangle hits Narset, and we're losing to the blue decks. We're not losing to the non-blue decks, at least yet. Uh, this thing's sort of a problem. Um, we'll take two. Draw. Another Carotid. So that's six mana. We're almost up to hardcasting uh, Treasure Cruise. So now the Unlicensed Curse is a 3-3. Three, three. Duress. I think I have to kill the angel here. Duress resolves, and then they get to hearse. Leaves me with double delve spell. You have an angel. They attack. No blocks. They'll likely use the hearse and pass, and if they don't use the hearse and pass, I can dig through time in my upkeep. Okay, they did. I would love to see, like, a strategic planning here. I think that's actually one of my better draws. Draw. Portable hole. So that hits the hearse, although I feel like the hearse has done its damage at this point. Okay, so they have four in the air, and I'm at 15. So I have a little bit of time to try to resolve this dig through time. Or treasure cruise. Uh oh. I guess they're not at seven more, so that's good. But it is six damage coming in. I'll go to nine. And the next turn they have eight in the air, so I need to draw something. Come on. Consider. I think we need to mill that. This comes into play tapped. And I'm one short of casting one of these. Damn. I think I'm just dead. If they have any angel pre-combat, they have lethal. Come on, just put me to one. You don't want to murder me. Looks like they do. And that's the game. So we have lost the Black White Angels. Yeah. You got it. Can't block. Alright, so we went 2-3. Not the best record. Uh, I really do believe in Dig Through Time Plus Cruise, but I think our deck likely needs some adjustments that I wasn't considering going into this. So here's our deck list. I think if I was to adjust this now, I'd probably do two... Uh, let me duplicate this, actually, because I still have to export this. All right, so we'll make a copy. So if I had to make a change, I'd probably do plus two portable hole, minus two strangle. 
And then in the sideboard, I felt like we were overboarding for the blue matchups. So you have to ask yourself, what do you actually need? And I don't know if I actually want Narset in the deck. I'd probably find a way to cut Narset. And right now, we didn't face the black red mid range deck that I can remember at least right now. Maybe we did. I'm old. Uh, I've mentioned that. But you might want to consider Leyline of Sanctity in the sideboard, especially now that we're not a Gigantha deck. Uh, I feel like that was a big reason why we weren't playing it previously. So you could probably cut two Narset and two of something else uh, for four Ley Lines versus the Black decks. And I think that would actually be a pretty meaningful change. I think we have to find some way of beating Azorius Control. I'm not sure if that's Silence or something else. If you have an idea, let me know. But I, I'm a pretty big believer in this package moving forward for Jeskai Ascendancy. You can always let me know in the comments section if I'm wrong. It's okay to disagree, or you might enlighten me. I'm up for both. Thanks for watching, take care, and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.